so good evening everyone today the topic of discussion is diabetic nephropathy staging perhaps a most common clinical entity a resident might be encountering with respect to this topic there are lot of doubts students confuse it with the class which is used in the histopathological staging and many are thinking it is related to gfr and when to use many confusion i'll try to clear it out first of all staging of diabetic nephropathy is different from the diabetic nephropathy classes which is being used in histopathological classification what is this this is nothing but microscopically when you see a diabetic kidney after the biopsy there is a finding based on the finding you will be classifying it class 1 class 2 class 3 and 4 so this is totally different what is the staging staging certain textbook give based on egfr certain textbook give based on albumin excretion so actually staging overall compiles of multiple parameters what is the importance of staging you will come to know at what stage the patient is in and what are all the damage which might have already occurred and how we are going to prevent this basically this staging was developed for type 1 diabetes because for type 1 diabetes the timeline of development of this is very clear as the years passed by they started utilizing it for type 2 also type 2 diabetes also it was called as mobinson classification as a dm resident you might encounter this in your viva question this was called as mobinson classification so what, what is the staging or the mobinson classification staging certain books give us staging certain books give us classification so what this comprises of it comprises of total five stages how we are going to classify first we will see what is the nomenclature given to the each, each stage second what is the important clinical or pathological character you might get for this respective stages what happens to the egfr what happens to the albumin in the urine whether the albumin will be present or not in the particular stage and what happens to the blood pressure whether it has any impact or not the last one is the chronology when the patient can be expected to develop this so these are all the categories under which staging can be made and why the staging is important it is having a prognostic significance and we can approximately assess at what stage a patient is in suppose if a patient jumps from stage 1 to stage 5 fast that means some other reason is there for the renal dysfunction if the chronology is bypassed so first is the stage 1 so total there are five stages stage 1 is also called a stage of hyperfiltration so diabetic nephropathy starts patient glomerular will be functioning or filtering more so that is why it is called as stage of hyperfiltration what is the important characteristic the glomeruli will be having a hyperfiltration so this is the time that gfr will be increasing many a diabetic patient probably you might have encountered they will come with the creatinine of 0.3 0.4 diabetic patient they will be so happy so what that indicates it indicates the patient is in the stage of hyperfiltration even if you see the graph of gfr initially the for diabetic patient it goes up then it goes down so gfr increases probably 120 plus it might be why hyperfiltration occurs that physiology and all i will discuss somewhere else so in the stage 1 hyperfiltration the particular characteristic is glomerular hyperfiltration occurs gfr not decreases it increases probably 90 to 120 it might be way above serum creatinine might be lower in the urine albumin might not be there albumin is in blood pressure is usually normal chronology probably from the time of diagnosis up to 5 years this stage might persist second stage 2 stage 2 is also called as silent stage because no much clinical manifestations are there what is the important finding in the histopathology so characteristic is glomerular basement membrane thickening if we do biopsy which we normally won't do because if the patient doesn't have clinical manifestation why we will do so what they have found is glomerular basement membrane thickening might be there which is an important characteristic of this gfr is normal 
there is no column here in the urine albumin mostly won't be there usually albumin won't be there even if it is present it will be of very very low quantity bp is usually normal from 5 to 10 years onwards after the onset of diabetes in type 1 or in type 2 very difficult to mention the chronology in type 2 but we can apply it to type 2 also so after the onset of diabetes after 5 years probably the patient might be in the silent stage stage 3 is also called the incipient stage what occurs is the presence of microalbuminuria presence of albumin in the urine GFR starts declining it won't come drastically down this GFR comes from 90 start going towards 80 70 60 the GFR might start falling down there will be presence of microalbuminuria in the urine 30 to 300 milligram per day of albumin might be present BP this time there might be normal blood pressure or the patient might be having clinical hypertension probably might or might not develop so plus minus hypertension so what is the time period where you can expect this to occur from 5 to 15 years this is what the chronology is being given various textbook give a range so you can't say exactly at 10 years he will develop it is a range from 5 to 15 years the patient is expected to be in this stage fourth stage is called as overt diabetic nephropathy where there is macro albuminuria this is the time where the patient will start developing clinical feature there will be edema facial puffiness can start egfr falls significantly probably the patient egfr falls below 50 40 ckd stage 3 4 the patient reaches there will be macro albuminuria more than 300 milligram of albumin per day blood pressure usually patient will be having hypertension because diabetes comorbidity hypertension as everyone will be having mostly they will be having what is the time period you can expect this if the patient is a diabetic for more than 15 to 20 years last stage is uremic stage the basic characteristic if you take the pathology patient will have full-blown fibrosis clinically the patient presents with ESRD GFR falls way below 15 the patient will be no longer able to maintain the life without the need for RRT it's almost end stage renal disease there will be a full-blown proteinuria if the patient urine output is there otherwise it might not be there BP usually high after 25 years so this is the classification that we use for or staging that we use for diabetic nephropathy called as Mobinson classification what is the important point to note here is microalbuminuria starts at stage 3 the patient goes into ESRD by stage 5 so this staging is basically for type 1 diabetes the timeline will be very clear but we can use it for type 2 diabetes also so what is the approximate age approximate years after which the patient developed this approximately you can remember as 5 10 15 and 20 plus if the patient is diabetics and diabetes is uncontrolled for these many years there's a chances patient will progress through these stages stage 1 2 3 4 5 this much period of uncontrolled diabetes or other comorbidity should be there to make the kidney function to the ESRD stage and one more question I frequently encounter is patient will be recently diagnosed diabetes patient my presence with end stage renal disease many a medicine resident label it as diabetic nephropathy is it possible no at the five year range even if the diabetes is uncontrolled there is a chances patient will be having proteinuria or something if the patient is in ESRD there will be some other cause you have to evaluate for that probably an infection probably a rapid progression of diabetic nephropathy so to finish this diabetic nephropathy why how the staging helps stage 1 2 3 4 5 for example if a patient by history if he is in stage 2 but if he presents with ESRD that means you have to evaluate for some other cause which might have led to this renal dysfunction for example infection 
or cardiovascular syndrome or some other etiology might be there from the history only for example if a patient is coming with a history of diabetes for 10 years what you can expect in the urine you can expect microalbuminuria macroalbuminuria based on the staging you can predict according to the staging according to the presence of microalbuminuria this staging helps to add the preventive measure to stop the progression of diabetic kidney disease you can take the measures you can plan for starting arb ac inhibitors or sglt2 inhibitors accordingly so at least for the medicine residents you have to be aware of the staging for a dm resident this is called as mobinson classification and a few textbook confusingly given these two staging many uh, places in the internet you might encounter silent stage is being given along with the incipient stage but when the mobinson staging was used this is how it was used and the main use is you should know how it is being progressed that's all thank you and regarding this one the classification probably we will see in the next video classification that we use for diabetic nephropathy histopathological classification that is different this is different you have to be aware about this to handle the clinical cases bye bye